Welcome everyone to Throwback Gaming's Let's Play of Our Life Beginnings and Always Part 17. Last time we did growing, which was a very enjoyable moment. Where we talked about growing up and all that good stuff, you know, turning into an adult and whatnot. It's very, it was very touching. So, if you haven't seen it, I recommend that you check it out because it was really good. Learned about a lot of interesting things. And, but this time we're going to do family, which I'm hoping is going to be just as interesting. So let's jump in, shall we? The sun warmed your skin from its place in the sky and you closed your eyes, enjoying the mix of the heat with the pleasant breeze that drifted past you. You and Lee had spread out on a blanket on top of one of those hills behind your house and had been relaxing there for a while. Okay, now we're spending time with Lee. Lee had come over earlier in the day. And while a range of activities had been discussed, from staying home to heading down to the beach, a picnic on the hill had been the choice you both settled on. A small spread was laid out in front of you. Some bottled water, soft drinks, as well as chips and sliced fruit. You sat up and reached for a snack, listening to Lee talk away about- Oh, Lee! I'm, I'm, I'm so- I'm a genius. I forgot about Lee. Lee is your cousin. I said Lee was that guy that wore the football jersey in the last video. <laughs> oh, I'm so smart. Lee's our cousin that we're friends with, that we're like close with. Okay. Anyway, Lee talked about the musical she had gone to see a few days ago. It was unbelievable. There was singing, dancing, and crazy stunts, and it was all done right in front of my face. She's got pretty hair. Maybe one day we can go together. I gotta see more shows like it. You smiled at Lee's enthusiasm, knowing how much she enjoyed singing and performing. Maybe she'll be an actor someday, or actress. And she was good at it too. You had gotten to hear a chance to hear her sing a couple tunes, and you knew she put a lot of effort into it. You also liked to sing, but you weren't very good. You also liked to sing and had a talent of your own. You didn't like to sing, but you've been told you were good at it. You weren't good at singing, and that suited you just fine. Um, we'll go with this one. That didn't stop you from doing it, though. Yeah, jamming in the car. I wonder if maybe we could put on our own show. Think of how fun it would be. We could perform for our parents and ask our friends and some other people to come watch it, too. It'd totally work. Yeah, let's do it. I don't know about that. The idea gave you stage fright. <laughs> sure, let's give it a go. That's not a good idea. It'd be embarrassing. But wouldn't showing off to everyone be fun? The thought of an audience made you feel queasy. Not really. Are you really super sure? You have so many skills you could show off to the masses. Okay, okay, I'll do it. I really don't want to, I'd rather do something else. I guess. You could see that Lee was really excited about the idea, so with a small nod of your head, you agreed to go along with it. I'm gonna sing. Do you want to too, or maybe something else? I'll sing too, I'll dance, I'll write the song, I'll do some kind of stunt that goes with the music, I'll pick the outfits, I'll do the makeup, or I'll make a backdrop for some kind of stage. Um... So I can make the backdrop or something. Yes. that make a real show. I'll draw something. I'll paint something or I'll sew something. Because I'll draw. That's right. We have an art kit. I forgot about that. You have an art kit at home full of color pencils and markers that you could use to create a picture for the show. You just hope there'd be a large enough piece of paper or cardboard for the backdrop. Is there anything else going on? come into your head? Sure, one more thing. Oh. So we're gonna write the song too. Oh, I hope it's something dramatic. No, how about fun? Fun is better. What about both? Lee's face lit up at the idea and she gave you a broad smile. That sounds perfect. Is there anything else that comes to your mind? Uh, no. We're not trying to do more work. <laughs> the two of you ran back to your house to grab the supplies you needed, dodging your mom's amused questions before heading back out to the blanket you shared. 
you made sure that you had a notebook and pen in case some inspiration hit. Lee and you discussed the plans in detail, settling on a song first and then practicing out the parts for the show. The afternoon passed quite, uh, quickly, the sun dropping lower and lower in the sky, and after having thoroughly worked out how the show was going to go, you decided to take a break. Oh, you know, we should invite Cove to watch us practice our show. He can tell us if it's bad before we do the real thing. That's smart. You guessed that would be okay. I'm glad he didn't see me. You said nothing. We should ask him to come watch us later. Okay. It's too bad, Derek. That's that's what I was thinking of. Derek's the one that's got the short guy with the jersey. I had him confused with her. My bad. <laughs> It's too bad Derek is in the neighborhood today. I like him. Oh, do you like him now, Lee? <laughs> yeah, he's a good person. I really like him too. He's okay. He's kind of boring. I don't really like him. I'll say he's a good person. I feel like he was really cheery the last time we talked to him. I knew you think so. But speaking of boys we like, what's the relationship sandwich between you and Cove? Is it good? Yeah, it's good. I don't know. You blushed and said nothing. You shouldn't gossip. I think things are all right. We're gonna blush because he said we were cute last time. <laughs> oh, you're bright red. I guess it's very good. <laughs> but really, are you gonna be telling him you have a crush on him anytime soon or what? I don't have a crush on Cove. I'll tell him soon. No way I'm not telling. I'm pretty sure he already knows or you aren't sure if you want to Cove. Uh, Cove knows. We both know, you know. Pretty sure isn't pretty, is sure, sure. You should declare it to him. You mumble something and clear it and she gave you a pointed look. You know that he has a crush on you too. It's obvious for him. It's obvious for you. So why don't you just do it? Exactly. We both know this. I mean, last episode, it's pretty much declared, you know? He didn't say anything, wondering about the possibilities instead. The two of you talked a little more about Cove, amongst other topics, and you found it that it was nice having someone to speak with about these sort of things. Finally, you both decided to pack up everything and head back to home for the evening. Lee talked excitedly about the show as you did, and you thought back on what you had already accomplished for it. You could definitely do with a little more practice, but what you had so far was a solid foundation for the performance. She looks so happy to see us. Your mom's kind of like, I don't know. These are they all look, she doesn't look happy, and these two don't know what's going on. I don't know. Upon walking in the front door, you were met by your moms and Elizabeth hovering, hovering around each other in the living room. Maybe they're fighting. Tension hung thick in the air as three of you turned to them in Lee, frowning slightly. You had interrupted something, exactly what you weren't sure. She looks mad, and they look disappointed. <laughs> Wow, who died? Uh, no, that is, that's never called for. What's going on? You look between them, it's a nothing, and you say, yeah, let's ask what's, the, what's going on. Your moms looked at each other, wondering which one of them is going to speak first. Eventually, mom cleared her throat and spoke. We're just having a talk with your sister. Well, what kind of talk? Is it one of those things where it's uh, a girl talk, or is it like family stuff? The room fell silent again, with no one quite knowing what to say. You felt incredibly awkward, but the silence didn't last long. You don't have to stop just because those two are there. There's no reason to try to keep it a secret. Ooh, it's something serious. Elizabeth mad, was mad with her arms folded defensively over her chest, but your mom's not in agreement with her. Elizabeth was asking about her parents. Are you talking about Lee's parents? Her biological ones. Oh, Elizabeth wants to know who her, who her biological parents are. Okay. The world spun around at you at the news. You couldn't understand why this was happening now. When you glanced at Lee, she shuffled at her feet uncomfortably. Oh, she's talking about Elizabeth's birth parents. She shuffled her feet uncomfortably as though she didn't know if she should be here or, or not anymore. You didn't know either. Your moms had always been open and honest about the fact that neither one of you had given, neither one of them had given birth to you or your sister, but the details had been fully explained before. It made sense that Elizabeth didn't know a lot about her biological parents and wanted to know more. You just never thought you accidentally stumbled into it. 
Elizabeth looked up at your parents expectantly. She wasn't going to let the unintentional interruption derail things. We don't want to keep that information from you either. It's your right to know your past, but we did want to wait until you, you asked us to hear for yourself. Well, it's happening now, so... Your mom shared a nervous glance, and Ma took a quick breath before speaking again. It's probably not good. I adopted you from the Philippines when you were just a babe. Oh, so Elizabeth's supposed to be from the, Pil the Philippines. Interesting. Elizabeth dropped her arms, her eyebrows shooting upwards in surprise. Wait, I wasn't born here? Uh-oh, identity crisis. No, you weren't. You could clearly see that your sister was appalled by this information. You even struggled with it more with what to do and how to react. Am I going to have to pass some tests to be a citizen? Um, this is actually a legitimate question. I don't know how that works, since she wasn't born here. No, you were adopted into the country. We took care of things. You're already a citizen. You have nothing to worry about. I followed all the laws when it came to bringing the child into the U.S. Nothing can be held against you. Well, that's good. Elizabeth sighed. Puh. Pelated, I guess, with the information, but still far from happy. Who were my parents? As people, why did they put me up for adoption in the first place? Ma softly put her hands over Elizabeth's shoulder, trying to provide some support before she gave her the answer. Um, it's not going to be good. Either her mom dialed in childbirth, or she was young and she gave you up. It's going to be something that's not going to be pleasant. Oh, well, both parents died. That sucks. I'm so sorry, sweetie. Your parents were reported to have died. They didn't go into details on the specifics of how, but you were an orphan. I wish we had better news for you, Elizabeth. Elizabeth was torn between emotions. Her eyes filled with tears as she threw her hands up in the air, settling on enraged. Great, so I can never meet him, even if I wanted to. Not that I could anyway, since they live in another part of the world where when they were still alive. Well, everybody's just gonna be... That's depressing. They feel bad because she asked, which, I mean, they're right. You're allowed to ask, but, you know, it still hurts your feelings because you're the ones who's taking care of them and whatnot. And she feels bad because if she wanted to meet her parents, she, her biological parents, she can't because they're both dead and living, you know, on the other side of the world if they were still alive. It's a big mess. Elizabeth turned her back on you and your mom's and stored off, sprinting up the stairs into her room before anyone else could stop her. I have to go and talk to her. Ma immediately started to follow her, but Mom gently held her by her arm and shook her head. We should give her a little space to process it all. Good idea. Your mom's head hung low, but she stopped walking. With Elizabeth now gone, the two of them seemed to remember you and Lee were still standing awkwardly off to the side. I'm sorry you had to see all that. It's not how I expected it would happen when the time came. But since it's the topic of the day, Jamie, is there anything you'd like to ask? You deserve to know, after all. Lee patted your back and gave you, support gave you a supportive look. I want to know. No, I don't want to hear. Not right now. Or you couldn't even answer. I was actually just thinking about this. I feel like it'd be better to ask now, since it's already here, than to bring it up again, you know? Just get it over with, you know? And I'm sure you probably would be interested, even if, you know, they're the ones that raised you. Sure. Your parents both nod in sync to reply, ready to talk. Um, I can leave if you want these things to be private. You can be here. It's fine. I can do that. Lee shifted a little closer to you in support, and you were glad to have her there with you. It made you feel a little stronger somehow. You turned to face your parents again, preparing yourself for what they were about to tell you. Maul was the first to speak, her voice quivering with emotion. You were adopted as a baby, but two years after Elizabeth. We used a different organization that time, and you were adopted within the U.S. We're sorry to tell you, Jamie, your parents also passed away. And no other family members took you in, if there were any. That's why we wanted to wait until you asked. We didn't want to suddenly drop that in your lap. We wanted you to be prepared. We're sorry, Jamie. 
They gave you a reassuring squeeze on the arm to show she was there for you. Thank you for telling me. Okay, you said nothing. It's not your fault. You didn't kill them right. <laughs> Don't say that. You started to cry. You were angry. Well, just say thanks for telling me. I did want to know, and I do now. Thank you for listening, Jamie. If there's anything else you want to know, all you have to do is ask. We'll do our best to answer any questions you have. How are you feeling now? Are you going to be okay? Lee watched you closely as though judging how exactly she should react to what's going on. I feel fine. I feel fine, but you didn't mean it. You started to cry. You held back the tears, but you weren't fine at all. Anger rose inside of you. You definitely were okay. You said nothing. Um. I don't know. I kind of want to go with this one because, I mean, it is unfortunate. Because you don't have the option to go talk to your parents and see what they had to say about why they gave you up. But since your parents died, maybe it was because you were, you know, your parents passed and you didn't have no relatives to take you in, so you ended up becoming an, an orphan. But you don't really have that much of a con I mean, they're your, they were your parents, but you didn't know them really, you know? And you were raised with them, so I don't know how, you would, how much emotion you would feel over that. You spoke with a refreshed tone as though you had a load off. Your mom smiled slightly, but they knew they believed you. Besides, it probably makes them feel better, too. No one seemed to have any words after that. You went up to your room. You needed to stay here with your mom. You wanted to go out of the house. You wanted to see Elizabeth. You wanted to see Cove. Well, let's go talk to Cove. More than anything, in that moment, you wanted to see Cove. No one could be there for you the way he could. True. I'm going to go out for a little while. I'll be back before it's really late. Your mom's not in understanding, trusting you to make the best call for yourself. Lee's footfalls echoed from behind. You knew she was following you. Can you stay, Lee? I want to go by myself. You encouraged her. You said nothing. Oh. Uh. Should we ask Lee to come with us, or should we tell her to go? Oh, we'll ask her to stay, I think. Oh, okay. I'll wait for you here, but I really hope you'll be all right, Jamie. Once outside, you stroll across the street purposely. Coast house set in your sights. <laughs> I like his hair. After you raise a knock, a hand to knock on the door, it only took a few moments for Mr. Holden to answer, giving you a broad smile. Hey, Jamie. Looking for Cove, I bet. Yeah, that's right. Cliff turned and whistled down the hall in the direction of Coe's room. Hey, sport, you have a guest. After calling his son, he turned back to you and dipped his head. He'll be here any second. As promised, it didn't take long before footfalls echoed down the hall, and Cove's head of green hair appeared before you. He looked past the set to see you standing there and smiled, pleased at your visit. Hey, Jamie. Hey, Cove, can I hang out now? He gave you a placid smile, one you were also familiar with. Sure. You could stay here, all right? I'll be around if you need anything. Mr. Holden shuffled back into the house and closed the front door, giving you some privacy. Cove tilted his head at you, his bangs falling into his face as he did so. What's up? There's a lot going on right now. It's nothing. You didn't speak to him. I need to talk to you or my parents are dead. Um, I think if we told him that, he'd think it'd be our, our, our moms, not our biological parents. Um, so we'll just say this one. Cove's forehead furrowed in concern at your words. Well, I'm here. You can tell me. My mom and my dad, who gave birth to me, they're dead. Without having to say anything else, Cove reached out and pulled you into a tight embrace. His familiar warmth and a look at you. He actually touched us? What? That's so sweet, though. I'm sorry, Jamie. His words were whispering comfortly into your shoulder. You don't have to do this. I'm okay. You started to cry. Yeah, I would probably start crying now. You pressed your face into the crook of his neck, unable to stop the tears. The hold he had on you tightened. That's so sweet, though. Can we talk somewhere else? You felt uncomfortable huddling around the entrance of Coast House. That feeling didn't seem to be the problem, though. 
Yeah. Cove took you by the arm and encouraged you to follow behind him. You followed without protest. You headed towards the hills where you and Lee had spent the majority of your day. Things seemed so different then, only a couple hours ago, and you wondered how everything changed so drastically. You took a seat in the grass beside Cove, who bent his legs and rested his arms on them before turning to you again. Can you explain everything to me? You nodded softly before taking in a heavy breath and launching into the story. Cove sat quietly and listened attentively, nodding every now and then and taking a sharp inhale. It took a long time for you to re relay the details. Dozens of stars were pinpointed in the sky as the night wore on. Silence settled down between you and Cove. Wait a minute. Silence settled between you and Cove. Oh, between you as Cove sat quietly for a moment, contemplating everything you had said. When you finally spoke, his voice was quiet, drifting through the night towards you. JB. I'm really sorry about what happened to your parents. So, so sorry. He stopped suddenly and took in a deep, shaky breath. You got the impression he was struggling with what to say. I'm sad I'll never get to know them. I feel bad that I don't feel worse about it. I'm just so mad. Or you struggled, you, sh you shrugged your shoulders, not knowing how do you feel. Mm, probably this one, kind of like how Elizabeth was. I never find out what they were doing or what they were like as people. It's just all gone. Even though you love you love you love your adoptive parents, you know, it's kind of like you lost the opportunity to know someone that was connected to you, even if you know you never got a chance to meet them. Jamie, you're not doing anything wrong. You know that, right? I think that you can be as sad as you want for as long as you need, or you can feel okay about whatever you want to when it, about it whenever you want to. He sighed and ran a hand through his hair as he looked over at the ocean. I guess what I'm trying to say is, whenever you feel about it, it's how you feel about it. You don't have to force yourself to be different. Thanks, Cove. You cried sadly. You cried in relief, but you nodded. His word had made you feel better, and you knew it was true. You didn't have to apologize or make any excuses for the way you felt about it. Cove smiled at you a little, and you could tell he was trying to be comforting. And your moms definitely don't. It doesn't matter if you're not blood related. You're definitely family. I can see that. And I hope you can too. He felt the reassurance in his eyes. You stayed up on the hill together a little longer. Looking out over the ocean. The stars that shone brightly above it. After talking about the situation with someone who wasn't directly part of it. You started to see things in a different light. Above all, you were glad to have Cove's support, and to know you could count on him if you needed it. Hey. The sudden voice of your sister behind you made you jump. You saw her standing a little bit away. We need to comfort her. She walked closer, and you didn't quite know what to do, or what she was planning on saying. Would you mind going? I want to talk to just Jamie. You can come back. It's not going to be forever or anything. Cove seemed equal parts concerned and skeptical. Living now was the concept that thrilled him. You can't ask that. You nod at your head in agreement. I want to talk to you too. Yeah, we didn't say this to her. Oh, then we're on the same page. She made a little move along gesture with her hands and it was settled. You waited until the two of you were alone before fixing her with an inquisitive look. Elizabeth folded her arms looking over you. Did moms tell you about your parents too? My birth parents also died. Elizabeth broke eye contact after that. Sorry. Why'd you want to talk to me? Elizabeth raised an eyebrow at the question as though the answer should be obvious. I was worried about you. I was the one who brought it up, but I made you deal with whatever was left while I was gone. Well, that's sweet. She sighed, glancing at words for a moment before settling on you once more. I wanted to ask you about what happened without everyone breathing down our necks. That was pretty crappy of you just to bail. I'm amazed you noticed that. I'm amazed you noticed that was unkind. Thank you for thinking of me. I'm not mad at you. You were quietly surprised by her admission. 
She stuck her nose up a little bit at that, but her smile was soft. It's okay. I'm okay, Elizabeth. It didn't upset me. How are you allowed to be that mature? <laughs> the lightning spirits in her were gone quickly as she slipped back into a scowl. You have to be born in the U.S. to become president. What? You never heard of that dream of hers before. She noticed your battle and continued. I get I was never going to be president, but it just feels weird. Having stuff taken away and not even having a chance at it. Exactly. Kind of like not being able to meet your biological parents if you wanted to. I don't like having to know that I was born. I don't like having to know that when I was born, I was going to have a completely different life. So different, I can't even think about what it looked like in my head. I could have spoken another language, lived away from everything I've ever seen here, had someone else as my sibling. And then my parents died. I was adopted. And the life I got became a totally different thing. Yeah, but I mean, have you had a good life or have you had a bad, bad life because of it, you know? I can't go back to what it, what it was even if I wanted to. Heaviness settled between you and the person who became your sister. I feel like a two. I knew exactly how she felt or I don't really understand. It was a confusing feeling to have lived one way for as long as you can remember, but not having it be what was originally yours. Elizabeth watched you seriously. She was trying to make sense of this to you and to herself. I don't know why today was the day. Nothing came up to make me ask the question. It just was something that I had in my head for a while. When it was just me and moms in the living room, I just kind of said it finally and there you go. She tipped it from one foot to another, relaxing her stance just a bit. She also spoke more gently. Learning about them and what happened doesn't change how I feel about our family, Jamie. Well, that's good because your moms love you and you've all been together, you know, as a family, even if you're not blood related. She smirked, fixing you with her sharp eyes. I already figured that a long time ago that moms aren't our biological parents. That wasn't news. <laughs> Technically, one of them could have been related to you. True. Kept listening. Let her talk. Nothing about the family I was first born in would have made me decide that this wasn't my family anymore. If you had hoped you were free of your big sisterly status, don't think you're so lucky. <laughs> she bumped her shoulder against yours playfully, her lips tilted at the corners. That's so sweet. Aww. You smiled softly at her. You jokingly groaned at the protest. You bumped her back. You hugged her. We'll just smile at her. You'll always be my family too. I think I'm really lucky. Or you took a moment, took the moment quietly. Chuckling, she seemed pleased with how the conversation had gone in the end. Well, that's good. Ready to head back home? It's been a long day. You gave her a nod. Come on, you two, let's go. Oh. You walked home together in a comfortable silence down the well-worn street, familiar of all felt nights. When you stepped through the door, you found your moms quietly sitting together at the kitchen table. Their heads snapped up and they got to their feet to meet you, Ma giving you a careful smile. We're so glad to see you. Hi, I'm sorry for walking away before. Everything is all right. You said nothing. I guess we'll say this one. That's wonderful, sweetheart. Really wonderful. Maul came over, then came over and wrapped her arms around you and Elizabeth, giving you a tight hug. It didn't take long for mom to join in, putting her arms around both of you. She got embarrassed. We really couldn't have asked for better kiddos. We love you. Aww. More than we could ever say. Moms. You smiled at their comfort. You were glad. You were so glad your moms were all right. You're smushing me. <laughs> I love you too. You let them hug you for as long as they needed, and it was a nice moment shared between you. <laughs> oh, she smiled now. That's good. They both pulled back eventually and grinned at the two of you, and you knew then that you all had each other and you always would. That's so sweet. Hey, I hope you're all right. Yeah, I'm sorry, Lee. We needed some personal time. Lee came up towards you, a soft smile plastered on her face. And are you okay, Elizabeth? Elizabeth rolled her eyes and huffed a breath and you knew she wasn't 
used to showing her vulnerable side. I'm doing fine. Lee nodded, though you could tell she didn't quite believe her. Well now, since we're all here, how about we do something together as a family? That sounds like an excellent idea. We should have some fun before the night's over. I love the sound of that. Okay. <laughs> oh, Cove's here too. Cove looked a little bashful, likely over being included as part of the family, but he tried not to pay too much attention to it. Why not? That's good. We're all coming together at the end. You hit the smile that threatened to tilt your lips, knowing that Elizabeth must have been in a good mood if she hadn't even teased Cove for being part of it. And no matter what she could have said, you wanted him to be here. He was someone who was really important to you. Who's got a suggestion? Should be something we can do here in the house with everyone in the same room. You suddenly remember the show that you and Lee had been working on earlier. Maybe we can do our show. You were bummed you never got to do it after that. Or you aren't so keen on that now after what happened. Sure, let's do something light. A show? This is the first we're hearing about it. I'm intrigued. It would be amazing if you put it on for us to watch. Oh yeah, I need to see what you cooked up. Well, that's good. That'd be cool. You smiled at Lee, who returned the gesture while bouncing on her heels in excitement. Take some seats and we'll get everything together. Well, that's good. We're back, Lee and whatnot. Your mom's collected the chairs from around the dining room table and set them in a row in the living room where there was enough space for the show. While they did that, you and Lee quickly gathered a surprise you needed and rehashed the play in one last time. You went through the song you'd written one last time. The backdrop you could prepare earlier was also ready to go now that it was needed. When the two of you returned to the living room, everyone was sitting and chatting amongst themselves while they waited. The group quieted down when you and Lee stood in front of them on your makeshift stage. Lee was buzzing quietly with excitement beside you. You felt nervous all of a sudden. You were pumped for the show or you were unsure how you felt. Probably a little nervous. <laughs> No matter how small the audience was, it was all eyes on you. Okay, so welcome to our show. We only came up with it today, but we promise it'll be good. <laughs> you stayed quiet. Thank you for being here tonight. No refunds. <laughs> or you're going to be really impressed. No refunds. <laughs> Thanks for being here tonight. Your moms gave you a thumbs up and encouragement and ready for your performance. Then you nodded at Lee that you're ready to begin. Lee took in a deep breath, waiting a few beats waiting the few beats it took to get into song and started singing. It made you proud to have the lyrics you had written sung like this. When the performance was over, Lee took your hand in hers and the two of you bowed deeply together. Everyone gave you a round of applause and cheered for an encore. When you straightened yourself up, you were happy to see that even Elizabeth was clapping for you. Oh, that's good. Good family memories. Bravo, bravo. You're so talented. Your family rose from your seats and came over to congratulate you more directly. You were beaming from ear to ear. Ko was the first one to approach, stepping up to you and Lee with a smile on his face. Aw, that's sweet. Nice job. Thank you. Hey, were you the one who wrote that song? Yeah, that was me. Ko smiled content over his guess at being correct. I thought so. It was good. You couldn't help but smile... Feel flattered that he recognized your talent so easily. Your parents gushed about how great everything was and thanked you for sharing it with them. Elizabeth was complimentary in her own way, although she did describe the show as cute, which she knew she meant was kind of kiddie. You laughed it off, however, and were just happy that everyone had a nice time. Because that's the important thing. In the moment, you could have been more pleased to be part of your family you had. And that's it for family, everyone. It was really good. It was interesting, very deep, but good still. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like. Subscribe to the channel so many videos come out. And I'll see you next time when we do dinner. But until then, peace out, everybody.